Mamma mia! That's a lot of hype. Yes, as you can see from that pretty cringy meme I made at the beginning of this video, this video is about hype, and specifically hype investing, how it works, what the goods are about it, what the bads are about it, what to avoid, and how to make some money from it. But before we get too hyped, let's go ahead and talk about Skinport.com. Skinport's the gracious sponsor of this video. They're a very minimalist site with a huge inventory, allowing you to buy investments at very cheap prices, much lower than the Steam Marketplace. So if you want to go ahead and check them out, be sure to use the link in the description below. They also have a great Trust Factor rating and a huge inventory like I mentioned, so they pretty much have anything that you could possibly need, so be sure to check them out. I also have a Discord server with a lovely staff team and a huge amount of very intelligent people in the investing world, so if you want to go ahead and check that out, that's also available with a link in the description below. Just be sure not to talk to Hopping Hatter because he's not very smart. Anyway boys, let's get into this video. So the main reason this video actually came up and is actually being presented to you right now is because of the RMR hype that has recently happened. RMR RMR is obviously a pretty big deal right now in the investing world, and with a lot of those teams not actually having teams going forward, there was a lot of the stickers that actually rose quite a bit, especially North, for example. Now, this isn't really a new thing. Obviously, teams can leave CSGO anytime they want, really, and they can also get rid of their rosters or do huge changes like that, or they can change their logos, which all really cause a large amount of hype in the team sticker marketplace area. Now, obviously, team stickers aren't the only thing that experience hype. There's a lot of things that experience hype, like, for example, the M4A4 Howl. That's probably the best example of a skin that is basically held up to an insane standard because of its hype being discontinued from the game and turned into a contraband. If it weren't a contraband, it'd probably be pretty similar in price to the AK-47 Vulcan from the same case, so that's kind of how you can see that hype can affect items in value quite a lot. Anyway, back on the topic of stickers, especially team stickers. This is the main area that people are able to consistently make hype investment choices because this is the area where the most hype investment opportunities occur. This is because teams are the most prone to changing and actually having new logos or having new rosters or just getting out of CSGO entirely. That's the main area that people focus on because of this reason. If we look at North's RMR Hollow sticker, for example, when it was selling before they ceased their operations in CSGO, it was going for about 80 cents. But after it ceased its operations and announced it on February the 5th, it actually shot up to around $5 per Hollow, which is absolutely insane. It's more than a five times increase. Now this really demonstrates one of the big things about hype investing, which is how short term it actually is. For example, if you bought this North sticker on February the 4th, you'd be paying 80 cents per sticker. And then if you actually sold it on the next day, over February 5th, the way one day interval, you'd be making a five times profit. Now clearly you can't count on accurate timing like that, and you also can't really predict something like this that easily, but there is still a big argument there for how fast this can actually be in the right scenario. The other big thing about this that I think is really interesting is how many different entry points there actually is in this entire spectrum of hype investing. For example, you can buy a North Gold sticker, which will still rise quite a lot, it'll just cost a lot more as an entry point, and obviously you can also buy a paper sticker for a much lower cost and still make decent profits. If there's any investment strategy that helps out all levels of investors, this one is pretty good for that. So before we move on to how to actually accomplish this strategy at a consistent rate, let's talk about some of the risk that it involves. For starters, look at the drop off after the peak, and it's pretty hard to actually time that drop off as well. For example, the North sticker went all the way back down off of its $5 peak, all the way back to about $2.10 currently, and it might even fall further than that in the next couple days. The main issue here is timing. It's really hard to tell when this item will fall really fast and it's really hard to time when it's going to rise of course as well and it's pretty much futile to even attempt that so here's how you can avoid that the primary way to avoid this risk is to just be a profit taker if you make a decent amount of profit or if you set a certain goal of profit for yourself you can go ahead and just take that when it hits that level and then just be happy and not worry about how much higher the item actually can go historically speaking we see about a two times increase in autograph stickers although it depends on how important the player actually is when the player retires and then as for team stickers it can range anywhere from two times to six times in some cases, but it does fluctuate depending on the situation. With those numbers in mind, if you're going to be a profit taker in these scenarios and are going to try and attempt hype investing at a consistent rate, I would recommend going for about three times profit on team stickers and about two times profit on the autograph stickers. The key though is to not feel bad about missing out on other profit that you could have made. If you do get profit off of something like this, you should just be happy and move on. If the item goes up another 2x or 3x, you should just not worry about it and be happy with what you have. That's gonna be the best way to make sure that you don't become a bag holder and end up holding on to some stickers that are just falling in price. It's relatively simple for the most part as long as you follow those main core ideals and also set your own personal goals. So let's move on to how to actually do this at a consistent enough rate to consider it a strategy rather than just an event. For starters, you absolutely are going to want to keep up with the news in the teams scene and in the esports scene. If you're not able to keep up with that on a consistent rate, you're not going to be in the know about
about what could potentially happen with teams in the future. For example, checking out North and their placements in some of the tournaments they've recently competed in, it's not very good. They end up kind of ending up at the very bottom of the tournaments or very occasionally going near the second place area. North really hasn't had any huge achievements since about 2019 and before, so there is definitely an argument there for saying they fell off and that's why they chose to disband. Now North specifically actually cited a few reasons for why they ceased operations, being a lack of investors and also a demonetizable thing, but the key here is the lack of investors, which is usually because the team isn't really performing enough for the investors to actually get a return. So if you haven't been able to surmise this yet, basically there's a decent amount of extrapolation that you actually have to do in order to find out if a team is at the risk of ceasing their operations or not, and it is going to require some research and keeping up with the scene, but if you're able to do that, there is some telling signs that you can find before the team actually ceases their operations. Now technically speaking, you don't have to do this proactively. You don't have to invest in something before the ceased operations happens, for example. You will technically have a window of time once the team does cease their operations, as long as you're keeping up with the news rapidly enough to be able to buy in after the team announces this. News does take some time to travel around the community, so as long as you're there at the very beginning of when the news is released, usually by following important subreddits like, like the official Counter-Strike subreddit, it, you'll be able to get your foot in the door before huge spikes happen. Twitter is also a pretty valuable place if you track teams and see how they're performing and if they're getting investors and stuff like that, and then you follow the teams that are at risk of potentially ceasing their operations on Twitter and of course turn on notifications for them, you could get notifications for the tweets right when they go live if the team is announcing on their Twitter that they're ceasing their operations. And again, you don't have to just wait for a team to cease their operations entirely. There's many ways to cash in on hype in the marketplace and a lot of it does also relate to player autographs like I said before, so if you do, of course, watch Watch out for that and maybe follow some of those players specifically, you'll also be able to figure out stuff before it happens. There's probably some quote somewhere that says something along the lines of an informed investor is a powerful investor, but if that quote doesn't exist then we'll go ahead and just attribute it to me right now. But yeah, it's important to research stuff and make sure you're informed with the markets, especially with CSGO items, and that's how you're going to be able to cash in on events like this. I feel like I should also give some recommendations here, but because this is such a volatile and sort of RNG-based market, there's going to be obviously some discrepancies between opinions with this whole kind of thing, but what I would recommend doing is just looking at teams that are just barely outside of the top 30, and teams that could potentially break into the top 30 if they were to perform a bit better. That's kind of the main strike area for teams that aren't usually doing all that well, and do have a risk of ceasing operations or losing players or changing their roster or doing something like that. And other than that, there's really not much more to say on this whole topic. That's basically how hype investing works. Those are the risks associated with it and also the ways that you could potentially inform yourself for when something like this happens in the future. The last tip I'm going to leave you with is to also make sure that you try to actually diversify your investment opportunities and your strategies and kind of incorporate some hype investing into it, but also try to do some other normal investing into skins in the operations or something along those lines. I personally think that hype investing is more of an appetizer or a side dish rather than the main thing that you should aim for, and I personally don't do a lot of hype investing either because I don't want to be a bag holder and I don't really care too much for it for the most part, but if you're into it, it's definitely a viable strategy at the moment and has proven to be a viable strategy for many times in the past. I'd say the best way to go about it is to not count on hype investing being a main source of income for your portfolio, but try to maybe incorporate a bit of it and do a bit of research and kind of follow some of those teams in the top 40 or top 50. And that's that's about it. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you enjoyed it or it helped you out, be sure to leave a like below and also subscribe to my channel for the best, most informed investment tips anywhere else on YouTube. I also have a Discord server and Twitter account that you can go ahead and check out below and be sure to check out Skinport for the best, cheapest investments across all of CSGO. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Peace.